often the man on his own experiences grace, the mercy of the ordaining Lord, even though for a long time, anxious of mind, he has to row laboriously upon the ice-cold sea over the watery way to travel the paths of exile. Fate is inexorable. A wanderer of earth, remembering hardships, the violent assaults of enemies, the extinction of loving family, spoke thus. Often I have had to bemoan my anxieties, alone at each dawning. There is now not one living being to whom I dare plainly express my heart. I know to be sure that it is an excellent virtue in a man that he should bind fast his bosom and lock up the treasury of his thoughts. Let him think as he wishes. A weary mind cannot resist fate, nor can rueful thought afford help. For this reason, those caring for a reputation often bind fast in their breast some sorrowful thing. So I, often wretchedly anxious, separated from my home, far from noble kinsfolk, have had to fasten my heart with fetters ever since. Years ago, the darkness of the earth enfolded my generous and loving lord, and I, despondent, traveled away, oppressed by wintry anxiety over the abbot of the waves. Full of sorrow, I was seeking the hall of a treasure-giving lord, where, whether far or near, I might find the one who would acknowledge my love in the mead hall, or would comfort me in my friendlessness, and win me over with good things. He who tries it knows how cruel is grief as a companion to him who has few loved bosom friends. Him the passive exile preoccupy, not coiled gold, the frozen precinct of the heart, not the splendor of the earth. He recalls the men of the hall and the gift-receiving ceremonial, and how in his youth his generous lord entertained him at the banquet. Happiness has perished utterly. He understands, therefore, who has to do without his beloved lord's guiding words for long. Often when grief and sleep combine together and chain the wretched solitary man, it seems to him in his imagination that he is embracing and kissing his lord and laying hands and head upon his knee, just as at times previously in days of old he enjoyed the gift throne. When the friendless man awakes again and sees before him tawny waves, sea birds bathing, spreading their wings, rime falling in snow, mingled with hail, then the heart's lacerations, sore in the wake of the loved ones, are the harder to bear. Sorrow is renewed. When the memory of kinsfolk passes through his imagination, the man greets his comrades with cheerful words. Eagerly he watches them. They drift away again. The company of fleeting figures does not bring any familiar exclamations there. Anxiety is renewed in him who oft and again must drive his weary spirit on over the ambit of the waves. I cannot think, therefore, why in this world my heart does not grow dark when I thoroughly contemplate the life of men, how swiftly they, brave warrior thanes, have yielded up the hall. Just so this middle earth each and every day declines and decays. A man may not become wise, therefore, before he has had a deal of years in this world. A wise man must be patient. He must not be too passionate, nor too impulsive of speech, nor too weak a warrior, nor too reckless, nor too timorous, nor too eager, nor too greedy for riches, and never too desirous of making a boast before he is fully aware. A man must wait before he utters a pledge until that person of bold spirit is fully aware which way his mind's thinking wants to turn. A prudent man must recognize how appalling it will be when all the wealth in this world stands waste, as even now randomly throughout this middle earth walls are standing, wind blown, rhyme covered, the ramparts storm beaten, wine halls are crumbling, the rulers are lying dead, deprived of pleasure, the whole proud company has fallen near the wall, some war snatched away and carried off along the onward road, one bird bore away over the deep ocean, 
One gray wolf dismembered in death. One sad-faced man buried in a grave in the earth. Thus the creator of men laid waste this earthly abode until, bereft of the sounds of the citizens' revelry, the ancient gigantic structures stood desolate. He who has sagely reflected upon this foundation and wise at the heart, deeply contemplates this dark life, often recalls a multitude of violent assaults and utters these words. Where has gone the steed? Where has gone the man? Where has gone the giver of treasure? Where has gone the place of the banquets? Where are the pleasures of the hall? Alas, the gleaming chalice. Alas, the armored warrior. Alas, the majesty of the prince. Truly, that time has passed away, has grown dark under the helm of night, as though it had never been. Now there remains among the traces of those dear people a wall, remarkably high, painted with serpentine patterns. The might of ash spears snatched away the men. The weapon greedy for carnage, notorious fate. The storms beat upon those heaps of stones. A falling snowstorm fetters the earth, winter's howling. Then darkness comes, the shadow of night spreads gloom and sends from the north fierce hailstorms to the terror of men. The whole kingdom of earth is full of hardship, the dispensation of fate makes mutual the world below the heavens. Here wealth is ephemeral, here a friend is ephemeral, here man is ephemeral. Here Kingsman is ephemeral. All this foundation of the earth will become desolate. Thus the wise man spoke in his mind, and set apart in thought. Worthy is he who retains his faith. A man must never too hastily express his anxieties from his heart, unless the man knows beforehand how to effect the cure with courage. It will be well for him who seeks grace, consolation from the Father in heaven, where for us all the immutable abides.